안녕하세요. 안차키입니다. Glad you decided to join us on this edition of Let's Speak Korean, where we spend each lesson learning some useful Korean expressions. And here to guide us through our lesson is Ji s u n g h y u n 선생님. 안녕하세요, 선생님. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요, Ji s u n g h y u n 입니다 We have more Korean expressions for you, so please stay with us. By the way, how was the party yesterday? Well, it went well, and thanks for coming. Mm, it was my pleasure. Now, did you have a difficult time cleaning up afterwards? No, it was no problem. I see. All right, then. Let's turn to our lesson for this time. This time, we're going to be learning how to thank someone, and we'll also learn how to come up with some negative sentences. All right, then. Let's go to the clip now. <laughs> 마이크 씨, 이사 잘 끝났어요? 네, 덕분에 잘 끝났어요. 민욱 씨, 도와줘서 정말 고마워요. 아니에요. 그런데 일을 많이 해서 아프지 않아요? 아프지 않아요. 마이크 씨, 이사했지요? 이거 선물이에요. 감사합니다. 그런데 이사하는 것 나한테 왜 연락하지 않았어요? 섭섭해요. 다음에는 수지 씨한테 연락할게요. 꼭 와서 도와주세요. Here's a quick recap of what was in the clip. Now, it seems that Michael has moved and Minook helped him move his things. Michael thanks him for this, but Minook says that it was nothing. Now, at this point, Suji comes along and gives Michael a potted plant to congratulate him on his move. Now, she also says that she would have liked to help him move, but that she was disappointed that he didn't contact her. Well, then, let's get a check of the expressions in this lesson. We'll learn how to thank someone. And we'll also learn how to use the phrase ji an ta to come up with negative sentences. We'll begin with the expression to thank someone. Let's go to the clip now. Minook 씨, 도와줘서 정말 고마워요. We came across the expressions 고마워요 and 감사합니다. They're both expressions to thank someone, but there must be a reason for having the two separate expressions. 선생님, could you tell us about this? Sure. The expression 고마워요 can be used in uh, less formal situations and has more familiar feel to it, whereas 감사합니다 can be used in formal situations and sounds more polite than 고마워요. But we also have the expression 고맙습니다, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You can say that 고맙습니다 is an expression somewhere between 고마워요 and 감사합니다. All right, so it's 고마워요, 고맙습니다, and 감사합니다. Let's repeat them after 선생님. 고마워요. 고마워요. 고맙습니다. 고맙습니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. But aren't there times when you want to say why you're thanking that someone? Well, what should we do in this case? That's a good question. In that case, all you have to do is attach either 어서 고마워요 or 감사합니다 to the stem of the verb that indicates the reason. Let's get some practice with this. We'll begin with the expression to thank someone for their help. 도와줘서 고맙습니다. In English, we usually say you're welcome when someone thanks us. Now, what do we say in Korean? 아니에요. 아니에요. 
Anieo is usually used to mean that something isn't so. Well, in this case, Anieo is used to mean that it's all right or that it is nothing. It's a humble expression to tell someone that they needn't feel too indebted for whatever is done for them. Now, 선생님, mm -hmm. 가르쳐줘서 고맙습니다. 아니에요. All right, so this is how it is used. So the equivalent for your welcome in Korean is 아니에요. Don't forget this. All right, let's move on. We'll learn how to form some negative sentences this time. Let's take a look at the clip now. Michael asked Minuk if he isn't sore from all the work that he did. Now, how did he say this in Korean? 일을 많이 해서 아프지 않아요? What is the common factor between the expressions 아프지 않아요 and 연락하지 않았어요? Well, you may have noticed that the common factor is the expression 지 않다. Now, 선생님, mm -hmm. when do we use this expression? We use this expression to come up with uh, negative sentences. All you have to do is attach 지 않다 to verb or adjective stem. We learned in an earlier lesson how to attach the word an before verbs and adjectives to come up with negative sentences. But this seems to be a completely different method. Now, mm -hmm. how should we differentiate between when to use an and when to use chi anta? Well, there's no need to make a distinction between the two, but an is used mostly in everyday or informal situations, and we reserve the expression chi anta for more of uh, the formal or the polite situations. Thank you for that explanation. Mm -hmm. All right, then let's practice forming some negative sentences now. Please repeat after 선생님. 기분이 좋다. 기분이 안 좋다. 기분이 좋지 않다. We'll now try out some complete sentences with the phrase 지 않다. 기분이 좋지 않아요. 산이 높지 않아요. 선물을 받지 않았어요. 편지를 쓰지 않을 거예요. Time for some extra expressions. Michael, as we gather, has just moved house. The word for moving in Korean is 이사하다, and the noun form is 이사. When Minuk asks him if the move went well, Michael says that it did using a very special Korean expression. Now, what did he say? 덕분에 잘 끝났어요. 덕분에 잘 끝났어요. 덕분에 is a rough equivalent of the expression with your help or due to your goodwill or so on. Now, why don't you try saying it? 덕분에 잘 끝났어요. 덕분에 잘 끝났어요. And Suji says that she was disappointed that Michael didn't contact her to tell her about the move. Now, she, the, the word for to contact is yolakada, and the word for to be disappointed is sopsopada. So, I was disappointed that you didn't contact me. Let's try this expression in Korean. Yolakaji anaso sopsopeo. Yolakaji anaso sopsopeo. It's time to wrap up what we have learned up to this point. Let's go over the expressions one by one along with the clip. Mike, she is a chicken as oil.
마이클 씨, 이사 잘 끝났어요? 네, 덕분에 잘 끝났어요. 네, 덕분에 잘 끝났어요. 도와줘서 정말 고마워요. 도와줘서 정말 고마워요. 그런데 일을 많이 해서 아프지 않아요? 그런데 일을 많이 해서 아프지 않아요? 그런데 이사하는 것 나한테 왜 연락하지 않았어요? 그런데 이사하는 것 나한테 왜 연락하지 않았어요? 마이크 씨, 이사 잘 끝났어요? 네, 덕분에 잘 끝났어요. 민욱 씨, 도와줘서 정말 고마워요. 아니에요. 그런데 일을 많이 해서 아프지 않아요? 아프지 않아요. 마이클 씨, 이사했지요? 이거 선물이에요. 감사합니다. 그런데 이사하는 것 나한테 왜 연락하지 않았어요? 섭섭해요. 다음에는 수지 씨한테 연락할게요. 꼭 와서 도와주세요. We'll take a closer look at how to pronounce syllables with pachim that is followed by syllables that begin with a vowel. Here is an example. How should we pronounce this word based on the pronunciation rules we have learned so far? It would be read as oshan, based on what we have learned. When a word ending in a consonant is followed by a vowel, the pachim shiot carries on to the next sound. But let's try separating the two letters. We have the two independent words, od for clothes, and an meaning inside. But what happens when we read the two words together? Odan. The pachim is a shiot, but instead of the shiot sound, we end up with the tigut sound. Let's find out why this happens. This is a little complicated. Even if we have a vowel sound following a pachim, there are cases when the pachim sound does not carry on. That is, there are times when we have to read the letters separately, and uh, this applies to instances when the two letters have independent meanings and form nouns, verbs, or adjectives. Udan means the inside of an attire, and is formed by two independent words, ud and an. Therefore, they are pronounced separately. In the case of the word ud, the sound that replaces the letter shiot is the letter tigut. And we end up with the sound ud. And since a vowel sound follows this, we carry this sound onto the vowel to come up with udan. Let's listen to 선생님. Udan. Udan. Well, let's stop here for now. That is all we have. So until next time, 안녕히 계세요.